Hello, my name is Maggie, and I am a beloved child of God, and so are you. Today's collect for this fourth Sunday in Advent is this. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I love the idea that we're praying to God and saying, because of what you do in us, around us, and for us, God, because of how you made us from the very beginning, before you were even made into being, God was crafting you to be a mansion for Jesus Christ. It doesn't say an abiding place, which is a wonderful way to say it. It doesn't say a nice place to be. It doesn't say a comfy domicile. It says a mansion prepared for Jesus Christ. We are hugely beautiful and awesome and we were created and are being built to be mansions for Jesus Christ. It says it right there in our collect. So in the first week of Advent we were talking about Mary and Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel and the angel, angel Gabriel said, Greetings, Mary, O favored one. God is with you. And the tellings of the story have Mary perplexed and confused and saying, What kind of greeting is that? They don't say Mary was terrified and shaking on the floor because a huge, giant, scary angel just came up to her and started talking to her. No, Mary was confused and perplexed. It's Mary's wondering, a favored one. God favors me? I'm, I'm just Mary. I'm just Mary. And then in our second week, we talked about Mary going to visit Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, um, well, we talked about that in the first week too. But then Mary breaks into her song, Mary's song, which we call the Magnificat, which is one of the Psalms featured for today in our lectionary. The Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. And then she says, He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. So Mary's saying, I'm bursting with joy because I feel I feel God's favor. I am in God's favor. God loves me, little old me. Doesn't, you don't have to be sitting on a throne. You don't have to be some big important person. You don't have to be closer to God to be favored and to be so important to God, so important that he would choose you. He would choose little old Mary to be the, in, the mother of the incarnation of God on earth, Jesus. And then we talked about the shepherds who were just doing their regular old daily work. And all of a sudden, a chorus of angels came to them and said, don't be afraid. We've got really good news for you. This is huge. You're going to be full of joy. And the shepherds were full of joy. And they went and they sought out Jesus. And they went to Mary. And I I just read, actually, in our Advent reading, this kind of got me thinking. Imagine this. Imagine you're Mary, and number one, you're engaged to Joseph. You're looking forward to be married to Joseph. This is a, Things are going great. It's good. And then all of a sudden, this angel comes and tells you, you're favored with God, and you are going to be the mother of God, even though you're not married yet. That's not a good thing for Mary. That's not convenient. And then... You tell Joseph, Joseph's okay. Joseph has already had his dream. He's okay with it. Then you start traveling. You have to travel all the way from Nazareth 
to Bethlehem and you're really pregnant and you got to ride on a donkey or walk across this not really easy terrain all the way just because some emperor wants you to go and be counted, that's not convenient. In fact, I'm pretty sure as pregnant as Mary was, I remember being that pregnant. I would not have been happy about it. In fact, I bet Joseph heard about it the whole entire way, how inconvenient it was and how uncomfortable it was and how tiring it was. I bet Joseph heard about it. And so they travel all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which, you know, now if we had a car or in a plane, no big deal. But again, she's on a donkey or she's walking. Okay. Not fun. So she gets there and there's no place to stay. No inn, no hotel. Um, we are pointed, it's pointed out to us that the Palestinian hospitality um, is probably what made this whole story possible in that you wouldn't turn somebody away. Um, if they really had no place to stay, it would be your duty and your honor to make sure they had a place to stay. And when we talk about the stable or the barn, it might have been like a, a nice, like a cave almost, but nicely set up for the animals. Or it might have actually been in somebody's home, even in their back room where the animals also slept. Anyhow, doesn't matter. You didn't get to stay at the bed and breakfast that you had in mind because you're super pregnant and you've been riding on a donkey or walking all this way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. You get there and the baby's coming. You're going to have to have this baby, not in a bed and breakfast, not in an inn, not in a hotel, and you've just walked all this way and none of your sisters or your mothers or your aunts or your grandmothers or any of your friends are there to help you. You're just sitting there in a place that you don't know anybody and you're gonna have this baby. So you do, and you wrap him in cloths. Cause you don't have, I'm sure you had a nice, beautiful new outfit that you made for him back at home. So you wrap him in cloths and make him comfortable and there's no crib. There's no sweet little bassinet to put your baby in. So you put him in the best thing. There's a manger, a trough, a wooden a box that the animals eat their hay out of. Well, you say, well, hey, you keep him warm. So you make a nice, cozy little place and you put your sweet little baby down and you're finally getting to rest because the baby's sleeping and you feel good. And then these sweaty old shepherds come knocking on the door and say, hey, we just heard the angel chorus come and told us that this really big thing important is here and they're probably being really loud and excited. And they're saying, where's the baby? We want to see the baby. And you're like, shh, don't wake up the baby. I just got him to sleep. And they come and you could turn him away. You could say, Y'all get out of here. I'm tired. I just had a baby and the baby's asleep. This is not convenient. But she doesn't. She lets them come in and she's glad that they get to see the Messiah, this beautiful baby. And they want to they want to see the baby and they want to worship this baby that the angels have just told them about. So Mary opens up her heart. It's not convenient. It's not easy. In fact, she has a million reasons to be afraid. She knows that her baby could be considered a threat by people. She has so many reasons to be afraid, but she doesn't choose to be afraid. This week, the fourth week of Advent, we're talking about choosing love, because that's what Mary does. Mary chooses love. So here's her heart, and she does have worry, and she does have fear. She's a human being. God gave us worry and fear. We have worry and fear. But God doesn't want us to focus on worry and fear. God doesn't want us to choose worry and fear. He wants us to choose hope and joy and love. And that's what Mary does. And that's what we can do too. There's kind of a new movement going around. It's called a radical self-love movement. And I really like it because one of the um, leaders in the movement, Sonia Renee Taylor, uh, I was listening to her and she said, people say we should accept ourselves. You should accept yourself. Yes, you should accept yourself. But she says, don't stop there. Because acceptance is kind of like tolerance. It's kind of like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. No, really, I'm okay. I'm not too bad. I'm not bothering anybody too much. And that's not where we should stop. Ms. Taylor and God <laughs> want us to remember that we don't stop at acceptance. God wants you to live into, fully embrace the idea, the concept that you are a walking, living 
breathing mansion for Jesus. You are a palace. God created you in his image. God made you to do all the things that you do. Even if that thing that you do is sitting there being you. God doesn't want you to, he doesn't say, you got to go climb a mountain for my love. You got to go run a marathon for my love. You got to be perfect for my love. You got to be nice all the time for my love. Mm -mm. God does not say that. God loves you. God has grace for you. God is opening his arms and his heart for you. And we can choose that love. In our um, Advent study, they are talking about, you know, things don't always go the way we planned. Does anybody out there have any recent experience with things not going the way you planned or the way you accepted, expected? Did you think that this Christmas of 2020 would look like this? Did you think that this school year would look like this? Or if you've had a birthday during COVID, did you think that that birthday party would look like that? I, who knew to expect it, right? And my heart has broken a hundred times at least with things not going the way I want them to go. I want to be able to hug on all my church family and go to Christmas Eve service and see all of you there and sing with you and pray with you and, and hug you and say Merry Christmas and, and have a Christmas pageant and we have all our treats and goodies and costumes and so much fun. So much fun. And I want to hear Sanctifica playing their beautiful music. And I want to hear the choir singing to me. And I want to see Mother Dorothy's face as she greets me. I want to see everybody in love on you. And that's not what's going to happen this year. We will have our church service where we get to worship together. And we will have a recorded service with our Christmas pageant. And they will fill our hearts with love. And here's the thing. It's not what we would want to choose for us for Christmas, but we can see it and we can choose love in our hearts. And we can choose hope. We can choose joy. We can choose peace. And we can say that we are exactly where God wants us to be. And we are loved. I created our craft for the week, which is, I love this. So they're talking about unlocking love because your heart is like a treasure box with love in it. And you can choose to unlock your heart and let the love out. And you can choose love. You can choose to be isolated and to put into, to build yourself your own prison where you don't relate to other people. You don't reach out and you don't, you just be by yourself and don't find anybody to share love with. You can choose that. Or you can choose to unlock your heart and let the love out and in. So this week's craft is a treasure box, which I, you just take a piece of paper. I had a square piece of paper and I wanted it to be a little bit bigger and I'll tell you why in a second, but you just fold down the top corners and glue it. And I had these colored and I glued them on. So it's a treasure box. See, there's the lid. And when you open up the treasure box, it says, choose love so you could do just this put it on a white piece of paper you can make your own you don't even have to have the special um, graphics or anything you have something that says choose love and put it in your house for a reminder I'm gonna take ours a step further I was talking to uh, my family about it and we're excited what we're gonna do I don't know if you can see I made a pocket down here at the bottom and this is gonna go on a refrigerator and because daily we have things that disappoint us or maybe we get mad at each other or feel yucky or maybe we feel yucky about ourselves daily it happens we're human um so my family we're going to have a system where just randomly we're going to put messages for each other or maybe for ourselves and we can put them in a little pocket and keep it closed and you can check it and see every now and then if maybe there's a message for you can write a message for yourself if you'd like. I think just the message, choose love. That's message enough in itself. And this week, we have a fun little event planned. So we have our Advent nights, our last um, night of our Advent series on Wednesday. 
please join us because I want you to share what I'm about to tell you. So in our advent calendar here on December 22nd, it says, what does love look like? Ask each person in your family to take a photo of something that reminds them of love throughout the day. In the evening, share your photos and thoughts about what love looks like in your home. I think that's a wonderful idea. So I challenge you on December 22nd to go around your house and find one thing, two things that reminds you of love. Maybe it's a selfie. Maybe it's a selfie of yourself because you are so loved and you are a reflection of God's love. Do that. Whatever it is that makes you feel love or reminds you to choose love, take a picture of that. And then on December 23rd, which is Christmas Eve Eve, we're going to share our photos. You can bring them to our Advent series. I would love for you to tell me why you took this photo and what it means to you. Um, but we can also share them on Facebook, um, the St. George's Facebook account and Twitter and Instagram. Um, let's share them. Let's look at it because on Christmas Eve Eve, we can look at all of these things that reminds us for, of love and to choose love because then we can begin to unlock our hearts, the treasure box that is your heart. And when we talk about these things that help us to choose love, then you unlock the treasure box that is your heart. On Christmas Eve, you'll be so ready to think about what is coming. Love incarnate. Jesus Christ will be born. And he'll be born. We'll think about him being born thousands of years ago in Bethlehem and we'll think about him being born in the mansion that is you. I love you friends.